Okay, guys, here's another um, Ben Joyner video that I want to showcase. What I like about this guy is he hits the controversial topics head on. I think we Christians need to do that. There's way too much mollycoddling among Christians um, and in Christianity. We have to admit to the controversial topics and we need to answer them bluntly and head on. Now, I would play this video, but the last time I sponsored this video, it didn't turn out too well. So you're just going to see his picture there while I talk. I would suggest that you play this video. It'll, the link will be in the video description. And I'm just going to say a few quick things. The issue here in his video is about mass murder. It sounds like mass murder. The, the atheists talk about it all the time to say that God is a murderer, la, la, la. And Joyner's response is an awful lot like Jonathan Swift. I don't know if you've ever read Jonathan Swift, but he was a famous writer in the 19th century. He wrote something called A Modest Proposal, which was a response to the way the rich were not taking care of the poor. And what he did in his modest proposal is he proposed farming the babies and eating them. Because basically what he was saying in his satire was that, hi, the way you're treating the poor, you might as well be farming them like pigs and eating them. Joyner is, is doing a similar thing. He's not only he's, he's tackling the question about you know mass murder head on where you're supposed to, in this particular case, is 1 Samuel 15, that was Saul's big test, which Saul failed, by the way, um, where he commanded, where God commanded Saul to kill all the Amalekites, down, nothing breathing, not the animals, not the babies, not the women, not the men, not the children, not anybody. Everybody was supposed to be killed, including the animals. Now, Saul didn't do that. And that's why Saul lost the kingdom. That's what I'm adding to Ben's video here. If you go look at the chapter, 1 Samuel 15, Saul didn't do what God ordered him to do. God ordered him to kill everybody, all of the Amalekites, the whole people. Okay, and Ben's talking about why did God author this, okay? And he, his point is different from what I'm saying now, but his point is valid. What I'm trying to tell you is the backstory to that. 1 Samuel 15, Saul was ordered directly by God to kill all of the Amalekites, every man, every woman, every child, every animal. Why did God order that? See, we need to answer the atheists and the non-Christians about why God ordered that. Ben is taking the position, hi, it's God, he ordered it, he orders every death. Duh. So don't just restrict it to, you know, this is where he's acting like Jonathan Swift. Don't just restrict it to those Amalekite babies. Why, why not the whole human race? God has to order every death. Why is God just to order any death, let alone those Amalekite babies? And he's right to pose that question. We have to answer that question as Christians. We have to. Now, just so that you know, the backstory on 1 Samuel 15, which I suggest you read, is that God ordered Saul to do this. Saul refused to do it. And because Saul refused to do it, God took the kingdom away from Saul. So that makes it even more vicious sounding than the mere order to kill all the Amalekites, including the babies. You getting the point here? God says do something, and you don't do it, no matter how heinous it sounds. Then God will take the kingdom away from you. We Christians are facing that right now. We're being much too nice to the people who dispute over the Bible. We really are. It's really wrong. Okay? 
this is just another sample of it. Now, let me get back to the passage on 1 Samuel 15, because you really need to read it. In that passage, the people targeted were the Amalekites. What were they? They were child-burning people. They burned their own children. What they had was a statue with its arms held out. They called it Baal or Chemosh or Molech. Those were the common names, but it was really the same God. You put the baby, while it's alive, in the arms of this statue, and you torched the baby alive. You torched it. And then you were supposed to have sex while the baby screamed. That's what these people were like. They also, like the, like the Hittites, what they like to do is have contests where they, they kidnap somebody. They were big on the kidnapping slave trade. Okay, they were slave traders. They were also um, big on robbing caravans that went through the Levant, you know, going down from Europe to Africa along the bridge that we now call Israel. They were big on capturing caravans, raping women, stealing everything, cutting penises off the men. Okay, and then they'd have what they called little contests where they would practice. They'd take two men and they'd stake them out on the ground and they'd have a contest to see which one could skin alive his victim and keep him alive the longest. That's the kind of people the Amalekites were. And they trained their children who, they would, who could be burnt so they could have their sex orgies. They trained their children to be the same way. So God ordered Saul to kill them all. Now, there was a lead time between the time God ordered this and the time it actually happened. And there was a warning that went out to the Amalekites that this was going to happen. So now think, if you were an Amalekite mother and you actually loved your child, then you would get out of Dodge. But they didn't. Children learn from their parents. They're little walking sponges of their parents. So if you're two years old, five years old, seven years old, whatever your parents are, that's what you are. And the same is true for all of us. We are, we are little replicas of our parents. So if our parents are criminals and our parents are going to burn us in the arms of this idol, you, have, you tell me which is more fair, what God ordered or to let those people go on living. My argument against this 1 Samuel 15 thing is not the same as everybody else's. I wonder why God let the Amalekites live in the first place. So that's my sort of like addendum to what Ben is saying. And then the larger question is, hello, he's God. He knows what he's doing. And he orders everybody's death. So it's just a matter of timing. So is this really genocide when there was this huge warning in advance because the Amalekites might have converted and started to believe in God instead? Or, you know, how unfair is it of God if he gives them advance warning, number one? How unfair is it of God if these people are the scourge of the Middle East, which they were, how unfair is it of God when you got, you're an Amalekite kid and you never know if your parents are going to give you up to Chemosh so that they can have sex while you burn to death? What kind of effect does that have on you? Now, a lot of associated arguments to go with this. But, you know, we should respond to these things with more facts instead of just shying away from it or saying, oh, God really didn't do that and all the other kind of fakakta nonsense we come up with. We don't have to apologize for the Bible. We do have to explain it because other people are misusing it. And we shouldn't be, you know, little namby-pamby, oh, all roads lead to God or all roads, all kinds of Christianity is equally okay. It's not equally okay. It's not okay to compromise scripture, ever. And if you do, like Saul, 
The kingdom inheritance has been laid up for you since eternity past. You're going to lose it, baby. A king has to make tough decisions. God is king. He had to make tough decisions. He knew when he imputed souls to all those Malachi babies, which ones were going to die. And he knew which mothers could be influenced to actually believe in Jesus Christ as he was then revealed, Messiah to come and which men and which other people. And the other thing that you need to know about this, that we need to be telling the people who dispute this stuff going on, is that, hello, in the ancient world at that time, everybody was cruel like that. And when you killed everything, every living thing of a people, that meant you were not trying to take plunder. That meant that it had to be a judgment from God. That's how they understood it. If you're trying to take plunder, well, then you take plunder. And that's exactly the mistake Saul makes. If you read 1 Samuel 15, you'll see that. Saul instead takes plunder and then offers up some of the things he should have killed to God as a sacrifice. And he doesn't even wait for Samuel to arrive. And Samuel was the only guy who was authorized to make the sacrifices, the sacrifices of the animals. So Saul, in the name of being your typical namby-pamby Christian, oh, well, I'm, it's cruel to kill. I'm not going to kill the king, and I'm not going to kill all the animals. We'll take some of them as plunder. Well, Saul disobeyed God 100%. So the Amalekites didn't get what they were supposed to get. And so all the other peoples in the area who were like the Amalekites thought that, that they didn't get the message from God they were supposed to get. So God had to order it again and again and again. And only David was ruthless enough. And he did what God said. Now, you can sit here and you can say all day, oh, God is a mass murderer. Yeah, he is. Every single human being dies at God's order. You don't like that? Stop believing in Christ. Peace out.